Hi everybody, I'm Byron Day. We're following breaking news now here in Mobile, the Mobile County Public Schools offices. Let's take a live look there. And it appears that Superintendent Kressel Threadgill is about ready to reveal the county's plans for the upcoming school year. Let's listen. Thank you. Good afternoon and thanks everyone for uh, coming out. Uh, first, I would like to recognize our board members that are present. Uh, we have President uh, Commissioner Stringfellow, uh, Dr. Foster, and Mr. Battles. Uh, I would like to thank those Glad guys for coming out and supporting me. I would also like to recognize Dr. Brackens, Deputy Superintendent of Academics. She's here in case you have any instructional questions. Well, I know some of you are wondering why I waited so long to release this information. This was strategically done. And as you know, COVID-19 cases are continuing to rise. So I purposely waited until I felt it was the right time to release our plans. I am very pleased with our comprehensive reopening plans. Our central office and school staff have been working long hours to develop and begin implementation of this plan. However, today I announced to my administrative team that we are going to have to change the, the, the direction. The number of COVID-19 cases are continuing to rise each and every day, and that is very alarming. As a leader, I have to make tough decisions, but I do not make decisions that's best for me. As a leader, I make decisions that are best for those who follow me. As superintendent, it is my obligation to protect the safety and well-being of each of our 53,000 students and 8,000 employees. With that being said, I cannot, with strong reservation, put their health and even their lives in jeopardy. Therefore, this afternoon, I am announcing that Mobile County Public Schools will not reopen for students on August the 10th, 2020. We will officially begin our school year on September the 1st, remotely for all students. Students will not return to the classroom for at least the first nine weeks of school while we continue to assess the number of cases in our area. After the first nine weeks, based on our numbers, we hope to reopen our schools and continue with our plans to have three options for our students, which are face-to-face, -face, remote, and virtual learning. Our faculty and staff will take the month of August to plan to have professional development and to also deploy devices and Wi-Fi for our students. Everyone will not agree with this decision, nor will this road be easy. However, I am blessed to have the best board, administrative team, faculty, and staff, and I know without any doubt that we will continue doing what is best for our students together. Thank you all for coming, and at this time, I would offer some questions. Do you know how this impacts staffing? I mean, I, I don't know if you're at a point to answer that you have to just in terms of teacher units, that kind of thing. Right, so we, we, we have no plans at this time um, to lay off anybody. Um, it's business as, as usual. Everyone will have uh, assignments and duties, um, so we have no plans. Our budget uh, right now looks strong, so we have no plans of laying anyone off. Um, we heard a little bit about um, you know some of the students getting laptops from the schools to kind of help in that interim uh, period. Will the schools be giving laptops to students again um, for this fall semester? And um, with any students with issues kind of connecting to the internet. Will there also be kind of like pick up packets like there was in the spring? Right. So we 
don't plan on giving any instructional packets. We did that in the spring when we shut down in, in the spring. Uh, we have uh, ordered uh, several thousand of Chrome Chromebooks, several thousand of Wi-Fi's. Wi uh, so we feel like we have enough devices and Wi-Fi's for all of our students. How much is this uh, additional additionally costing the school district? Um, I hadn't added all of it up, um, but it's it's in the millions. Uh, you do know we received CARES Act uh, for this project, uh, so we do have some funding for it. Is that going to cover it, or is there going to be any deficit that the school district is facing? We, we never get enough money to cover it, uh, so the answer to that question is no. <laughs> Anything else? What's the difference between the remote and uh, virtual? Excellent question. Virtual, uh, and, and I would ask Dr. Brackens if she wants to uh, jump in, but virtual is when the kids basically go on their own, they log in, uh, is at their own pace. Remote is more structured, uh, the teacher driven, uh, kind of facilitate. Uh, they actually see the teacher uh, through videoing. Uh, so that's the major difference. Now, uh, prior to the day, uh what sort of plans did you have as far as the upcoming school year? You had mentioned earlier that uh, y'all had uh, worked out a plan uh, for the upcoming school year as far as uh, teaching the students and, and such. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, what kind of plan did you guys have? Yes, we had um, a 75-page comprehensive plan, which we uh, don't mind sharing because at some point we will have to deploy that plan. So we don't mind sharing that, that plan. But basically, it, it had three options face-to-face, um, -face, uh, remote, and, and virtual. What's your message to parents? Some might be struggling with daycare and things like that when the school year starts back. Right. So my heart goes out to the parents. I know this is a very difficult time. I am a parent of three uh, students. Um, myself and my wife, we work, so I understand the hardship that this put on parents. Um, but as a superintendent, I have to focus on their safety and their well-being, not only for the students, but the teachers, the grandparents that the kids go and see, the parents that the kids go and see. I have to take all those things in consideration. Uh, so my heart does go out to the parents, um, but hopefully we can get through this together. Hopefully we can look at the weeks, and if the numbers go down, we will be able to do a face-to-face. -face. As far as fall sports, I know a lot of students and you know families are looking forward to football and some of that. Is any of that going to be able to go on? Yes, I have been in uh, uh, communication with the Alabama High School Athletic Association, and we're in constant communication. And I think some things might change, uh, so that information will be forthcoming. Is there a perspective? Uh, date that you think school will open back face-to-face? -face? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, so uh, no, I can't give you a, a, a certain date. Uh, we're just going to assess the situation. So okay. the remote and virtual school starts in September 1st? September 1st, okay. absolutely. The system was in the process of getting some parent-parental input during the student surveys and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Do y'all have any idea of sort of the numbers you were seeing in terms of what families were thinking going into this? Yes, the state did a survey, and I think 20% uh, said that they wanted to go virtual, and ours, our local numbers doubled that. So we had double that to say that they wanted to go virtual. All righty. Thank you all. All right. Mr. Thurgill has a, um, another meeting that he has to go to. All right, that was Superintendent Kressel Threadgill of the Mobile County Public School System making the stunning announcement that Mobile County Public Schools will not be back in class August 10th and that um, by September 1st that students will be able to work remotely uh, or uh, virtual learning. Uh, he also said that uh, they're going to kind of wait and see for the first nine weeks. That's usually a school quarter uh, and see what happens at the end of nine weeks. So uh, the school system may or may not reopen at the end of nine weeks. But the most important thing here is that Mobile County Public Schools are not going to reopen 
August 10th. Uh, and then by September 1st that uh, students will be able to start working remotely, not in the classroom. They can, they can either work remotely or through visual learning. And uh, Superintendent Threggill also saying that teachers will take the month of August and staff will take the month of August to get preparations ready to go. So those students will be able to do uh, either remote learning or um, um, virtual learning as well. But uh, Superintendent Threggill started the uh, started this news conference by saying he had an obligation to the health and safety of the students, staff and faculty of every school in Mobile County. And of course, Mobile County is the largest and oldest public school system in the state of Alabama. But again, we'll have more on this announcement coming up on Fox 10 News at four and five. I'm Byron Day. We'll see you then.